I'm a different kind of a preacher. I believe in structured preaching. And I'll tell you what structure is, how important structure is. I want to give you water. So I'm going to open this and just toss the water out to you. I'm giving you water from the pulpit. I'm tossing it out. How many of you will drink? Yeah, if you get it. But if I put it in this bottle and hand it to you, I believe you can get more from the structure. The bottle is the structure. You don't eat or drink the bottle. You eat and drink what's inside of it. So do not um, go against homiletical structure. It's important. Whether you have it or not, that's okay. But I have it, and that's how I am going to deal with it. That's one of the gifts of the Lord. Um, drop that text for me, brother, please. It's 11.25. After I'm finished preaching, I'll make an altar call and I'll dismiss the service. But the church service is not over. Musicians are going to come back like last Sunday. We had prayer here. We had prayer there. We had prayer going on everywhere. And we want that to continue. If you have any special need, you come up here, the ministers and us, we will be laying hands on you individually and praying for you while the rest of the congregation, some have to go to work, take care of the kids, and so forth. My text, 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 31 to 33. I read. The big picture is, prior to this text, there's a famine going on to the point in Samaria where cannibalism was practiced. One lady boiled her son, and the other day the lady who promised to boil her son didn't. And so the king was walking on the wall, and he heard that. And he went into fury, and he went into anger. And he said he would find the person responsible for this. And that's where our text comes in. He's going to try to deal with the person or the forces that caused this famine. And that's the middle. The next part of this story is 24 hours later. After Elijah would prophesy, there would be abundance just in 24 hours. So let's read. 2 Kings chapter 6, 30. It came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman who was just telling him her story that he rent his clothes, he ripped his clothes. And he passed by upon the wall, and the people looked. People always look up at authority. And behold, he had sackcloth within and upon his flesh, which is a sign of mourning and deep sorrow. Now he spoke the king. God will do this and more to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him today. He instantly concluded that the man to be blamed for this is Elisha and that he was going to do something about it and take his head off. Now, Watch, this is important what I'm going to say here now. But Elisha sat in the house and the elders sat with him. This is the teamwork that will make the dream work. It's not just Elisha alone, but Elisha and the elders. 
So it's not just a one-man show that's going to bring victory here. It's a team. Get this because it will be continuously coming up. The elders of the church, those who help in many ways. Elisha sat in the house and the elders sat with him. The king sent a man before him, ahead of him. The king was coming. He sent a, a man before him. But before the messenger came to him, Elijah saw in the spirit and he spoke to the elders. This is what the elders must do. See how the son of a murderer had sent to take away my head. He's telling them to, to see what the Lord is showing him. Look, look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked, while he was talking, behold, the messenger came down to him. And Elijah said, Behold, this evil is allowed by the Lord. And that statement will answer a lot of our questions. Why certain things happen. And so, he said, What should I wait for the Lord any longer? It's time to act. When God shows you something, you don't have to wait. You act on what he showed you. My topic is test it before you arrest it. Because there will be some good things coming at your door and you can't afford to refuse it. But you have to discern what's at your door. And so you have to test it before you will arrest it. And uh, this man was threatened to take his head. Uh, my, my big picture theme is, if God has your heart, no man can take your head. The threat is real, but the God who preserves you is even more real. One day, a parcel came to our door. And uh, normally I would grab it and take it inside. But that day I decided, it looked funny. And I decided to check it. And so it was one of the neighbors, a parcel that erroneously was dropped by our door. And I read the name and it looked like some important documents. There was a law firm address. So I didn't touch it, I went and delivered it to the neighbor. The point is that I'm making, there are five or six doors that I'm going to be talking about where you have to look. And so you have to check it out before you check it in. Make sure it's for you. Because there are some things coming your way that's not for you, don't accept it. You have to learn to shut the door. And this is a trick of salesmen. And it's where we got the face, put your foot in the door. The moment they, long time, they ring the bell and you open the door. They put the foot right in the door and you can't close the door. Now you can because they have this little piece of chain on it. You open it and you peep and see who is it. And you don't want it, you slam the door on them. What we have to learn today, and this is the big lesson how to shut the door that is present in five different ways. So, let's go. It came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman, he rent his clothes. It was a horrible scene. Just like today, when you look at, when the politicians walk the wall 
and they see what's going on, they want to blame somebody. So if they can't blame one party, they blame the other party. And if they can't do that, then they go and blame the church. They say the church should be doing more. The church should be doing better. The church should be doing this. And the church should be doing that. And here is a classic example of Elijah, uh, uh, the king, wanting to blame somebody. So he blamed Elijah. When leaders won't accept their own faults, they look for somebody else to blame. And I would ask us, to check our own lives and see what faults we have. And don't blame somebody else for what we see in the mirror. Yeah. Let's take our faults. Let's be big enough to say, look, I am wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's my fault. Please forgive me and let us continue together. Can I hear an amen? Okay, so the threat is, is, is what I'm dealing with. He sent a man to take his head. What the enemy is going after in the, the, the churches today is that he wants your head. And he wants the headship of the family. If he can knock the husband out. If he can take away the role of the father from the children. And the provider and the protector from the house. He will have won a great battle. He is coming for headship. Headship of the family. He's coming for headship of your own head. Nobody should rule your head. Don't let anybody else live in your head. No matter what they say, get it out. You have to learn to shut the door that's in your head. Because if you let everything come into your head, you will have a big headache. People will be your problem. What they say is going to bother you. And so, the enemy wants headship. The enemy wants the headship of the local church. If the enemy could get in this church and begin to devise schemes and so we follow the world... I say, look, you guys are just a normal church. You, you're old-fashioned. You're like back in times. You're not updating anything. You don't have no party. You don't have no bright lights. You don't have no sound effects. You don't have anything to attract people. Well, hey, let me tell you something. I don't need that to attract people. What we need is the power and the presence of God. The Holy Spirit, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Lift up Jesus and men he will draw them. It is his power and prerogative to draw men unto him. Can I hear an amen? So headship. When the heart, like I said, when, the, when your heart is is right with God, your head will be protected. So now the, and the elders sat with him. The elders sat with him. It's important to work together. It's, it's important to sit together. He was sitting and they sat with him. They all were experiencing the same famine. Elijah was in the famine. The elders were in the famine. The king and the subjects were in the famine. Nobody was spared. Nobody was having a better time than anybody else. This week I, we had so many calls of bad news. So many people suffering. So many people going through some hard, hard times. It, it, we just have to sit together and pray together and wait for a word from the Lord. And that is what he was doing. This mighty man of God could have done anything he, he wanted to, but he was working in the will of the, of the Father. Sitting here and waiting and praying for a word. And then the only word he got was God showing him a threat. 
and he would take this threat seriously. He said, when he comes at the door, arrest him. Don't let him come through that door. Because if we sit together in the famine today, 24 hours later, we will sit together in the harvest. Because the harvest, he promised, would be 24 hours. He said, tomorrow by this time you will have fine flour at the gate. God didn't only show him what was happening now. He showed him what is going to happen tomorrow. And God is a revealer of secrets. And God will show you your tomorrow is blessed with prosperity. Oh yes, you're going through the farming now. Yes, it's tough. Yes, they're backbiting and eating one another up. But tomorrow will be better than your today. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Give him praise. And so, the king sent a man, the executioner. The one who wants to behead you and take away. So what did Elijah do? And what you should do? Sit, stay calm, and shut the door. Because you can go into panic mode if you get some bad news now. If you're in church right now and you hear your child something in, a, in an accident, what, what are you going to do? You're going to panic like crazy. The point of praying people is that they have learned to sit calmly in spite of what they hear. And these days there's not much good news that's going around. So the king sent the executioner. I want you to make this point very clear. The small devil precedes the big devil. The king is coming behind. He sent the messenger in front. The victory is not over at the first rebuke. Sometimes we say, aha, uh -huh, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you and you're done with that. Hey, there's a bigger fella coming behind. There's a stronger one coming behind. You have to learn how to deal with the enemy. And the first rebuke might not be sufficient because a bigger devil is coming right behind. And I don't care how big they come. Like Goliath, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Hallelujah, somebody. Before that messenger comes to the door, you, you grab him. So here is the, the story. There are five doors. The door of your mind. You can't allow all types of thoughts to stay in your mind. They will come. They will come. But you have to shut the door. If you entertain these murderous thoughts, you will find yourself in a self-discussion. Like me, I argue with myself. These thoughts come and I, I see a scenario and I begin to deal with it mentally and then I realize, hey, you're wasting your time. Shut the door on thoughts that will not produce anything good for you. Then there's the door of your heart. Your heart, uh, out of the heart are the issues of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The heart has a door. Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. Uh, only open for Jesus. Put up a sign in your door. Unauthorized entry. Forbidden. Jesus alone is allowed into my heart. There's a murderer at your door. He has no good plans for you. He has no good intention. He's coming to murder. What is he going to murder? 
He's coming to kill. He's a messenger of death. He's coming at your door. He wants to kill your joy. He doesn't like you to be happy. He's coming to kill it. Some bad news he's bringing and to make you worry and to make you unhappy and to take away the little peace you have when the morning comes. He's a killer, a joy killer. But Jesus is a joy giver. And we have a word thriller. Hallelujah! Because our, the strength of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't let him steal your joy. The execution of your happiness is in, on his way. He wants to kill everything good in your life. He wants to break up your family relationship. He wants to put your son against you and your daughter against you and your brother and sister is against you. That's his plan. He's a family destroyer. He's a congregational destroyer. That's all he knows to do is to destroy. And the destroyer is coming to many a home and to many a heart. And you can't let him in. You have to learn to shut the door. And so the, he said, he's coming. So what, what, what happened there? He's informing the elders of what's going to take place. And I am informing you right now what's going to take place today and tomorrow and this week. The enemy is coming hard at you to steal something that's precious to you. Don't let him do it. I'll show you that you have the power how to stop it. When the devil comes and he'll hear the knock on the door, you just shut the door and say, Not today, devil. Not now. Not tomorrow. You will never come in my family. You will never come in my home. You will never come in my church. You will never come in my job. I shut the door. I slam the door in the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Let this be your breakthrough and his breakdown. Let him fail at the door. While you prevail inside your house. Amen. See? You see how this murderer is sent to take away my head? You got to see it. If you're walking blindly in tomorrow and you don't see it coming, you're going to get hit. He said, see, look, look, look. Be sober and be vigilant. Because we have an adversary, an opposer, who's roaring like a lion and a monster, devour anything that's good in your life. You can't allow him. You have a choice in this matter. Why? Because you are being informed ahead of time. You're not going to be suddenly surprised by the enemy because God is saying to you now, be ready to shut the door. Shut that door. So he said, uh, he's coming. He's talking to the elders. When he comes, grab him. Arrest him. Make a move now. So you have to shut the door of your heart and your imagination. Shut the door. Of your home. There are some people you should not allow to come in your house. I'm talking about people. Because if you know all they're coming to do is sit down and gossip and bad talk other people. And begin with your church and your leadership. I know of Christians who get together and have a pastor's brunch every Sunday. After church, that's all they're going to do. Criticize the service. Bad talk this and 99 things will be done well. One little slip they will find. They will take it and magnify it. Come on, be reasonable. We are humans. Shut the door. Shut the door. It's a team effort between the elders and the leaders 
together we are stronger. If you leave the leader alone, it's not going to work in this context. If you leave the elders alone, it's not going to work. We've got to work together. Together we are stronger. Two shall agree. One will chase a thousand. Well, look what two can do. He sent them two by two. We can't walk alone. We need our brothers and our sisters. We need each other. You have more value than you know. You belong to, to the body. And we fight a common enemy. And while he was talking, behold, the messenger came down unto him. It happened just as God showed him. God will never deceive one who seeks his face. A praying believer is an informed believer. Because when you pray to God, he answers you and he shows you things. I believe God can show you your tomorrow today. As a matter of fact, I love that sign at the imaging center there. And I was thrilled by it when I went to do some imaging. They say, we can see your tomorrow today. Imaging. And then I find in scripture that there's the same thing. God can show you what's going to happen tomorrow and show you it now. And when you get that revelation, hold on to it and believe it. And rebuke the devil. If it's from the devil, chase him away. You can't entertain negativity. You can't hold on to what people are saying that can't happen. This can't happen. That, listen, with God, all things are possible. And so, let's shut the door. Let's close it tightly. Because this murderer is coming to rob you. And to take away your head. It's 11.51. I started at 11.25. How do we get the victory over this murderer? When you arrest him. And that is, a police officer is given authority to arrest. Whether he has his uniform on or not, he can make an arrest. You have been authorized by God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Word to arrest anything that comes your way. Behold, I give you power, I give you power and authority. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Come on. Use the authority to bind the enemy, to bind the devil, to bind his works. You have that power. You have that authority. It's given to you. Use it. You're an officer in the courts, in the army of God. Don't let him walk all over you. Don't let him trample over you. So he prophesied to the guy when he held him. And pushed him back outside and said, tomorrow, at the same time, fine flour will be at the door. And the king said, huh. the, 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 the messenger said, huh. remember he's a messenger. Remember he will bring you lies. Remember he will tell you tales that are not true. He's a messenger of Satan. Paul said a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me and to beat me up. That's what the word buffet means. You can say buffet. That's what people go and do eat. They buffet themselves up. They buffet up themselves. But this was a punching match. And he felt the punches. And he said, uh, a messenger of Satan was sent. Sent to me. Here is the messenger of Satan sent to Elijah. But he knew what to do. He arrested him with power and authority. And so, how, how do you get rid of this? The Lord will take care of him. When the flower, when the four lepers discovered the abundance in the enemy's camp, and 
They opened up the gates. This guy was in charge of the gate. He was uh, the authority given by the king to see who would get what. They trampled him. They ran over him. Fulfilling the prophecy of, of Elisha. You will see it, but you won't take it. I think that we can tell the devil certain things. We can tell him, hey, you can threaten me, but you can't defeat me. We can tell the devil, you can come close, but you can't come in. We can tell the enemy that I am not afraid of you because you were destroyed at Calvary. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He's a destroyed destroyer. He has no power over you to destroy your home, your happiness, or your joy. If you would stand up in your authority, if you would stand up in the power and in the anointing of God and rebuke the enemy, you will live a happier life. Your life will be full of joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let him rob you of what God has for you. Oh, hallelujah. Check it out before you check it in. Test it before you arrest it. And when you find it is not of God, go ahead and arrest it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And this is the powerful thing. If God has your heart, no man can take your head. Your head is safe. Your head is safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Did you understand what I said? Will you accept the word of God? That you are more powerful than the devil gives you credit for. I want to pray with you. I want to join together you as elder and, 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 and pastor. Stand if you need my prayer. Let me pray with you that we will rebuke together. We will destroy the enemy together. Hallelujah. And when I'm finished praying, I will dismiss the congregation, but not the service. The service will go on as they play music. You need special prayer. You come up here. We will lay hands upon you. The women were praying here last week. They had a prophetic time right here. Pastors were praying all over the congregation. I want prayer to continue. The service is not over. I'm just dismissing you because some, some said I have to go to work. I have to go do this. You go ahead, but service is continuing. Amen. Stay if you can. Say after me. This, you see, we, we, we do believe in confession, you know. Amen. We believe if you confess your own mouth, your ears hear what you're saying. And somehow it sinks into your soul. So I want you to say after me, Lord, I heard your word. I believe your word. I now confess. I am a conqueror. I will shut the door. The enemy has no power in my family, in my life, in my tomorrow. I'm a winner. I'm a victorious Christian. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I bless your name. Protect my house. Protect my heart. Oh, my heart belongs to you. That's why my head is safe. You are the savior of my head. You are the savior of my head. You gave up your head so that I could keep mine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Bless me, Lord. Bless my home. Bless my family. Bless my church. Bless my finances. I stop the enemy. I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke the murderer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah.